Hello! Today we're going to be painting our jellyfish and you can have a lot of fun with this one. I'm going to show you one color variation but you can go completely rogue on this one and change up the colors however you want. It's also a great painting for kids. Um, there's not a whole lot of detail today but it's a lot of fun to do all these brush strokes in all of these colors. So as always feel free to pause, rewind, work along at your own pace. And before we get started, I'm just going to quickly go over all of the tools that you're going to need today. So to start off, you're going to want to have a canvas or a piece of paper, something you're going to paint on. I'm using a little bit of a smaller canvas today. So this one is an 11 by 14, but any shape or size will work. And then you're going to need to have only one paintbrush. Um, you may want to have a small brush as well. In fact, I think I will grab a small brush there just in case. So a medium brush is going to be doing about 90% of this painting, maybe even 100%. And I've got a small brush for backup just in case I want to use that later on. And then my paint here, I've only got the three primary colors and white. So basically from those, I can mix up any color I want. And then I have a jar of water so that I can wash out my paintbrush and a rag there to dry it off as we go. All right, so we're going to get started and we're going to go ahead and pick up our medium paintbrush. And we're just going to get started with the shape of our jellyfish. So what we want to do is kind of up in this top sort of top section, maybe a little bit more to the right of our canvas, we're going to create sort of the body of the jellyfish. So first thing we want to do is mix up the color. I'm going to start with sort of a light, almost a periwinkle blue. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue. And you won't need a lot because the majority of this color is going to be white. So a little bit of blue, I'm going to throw a little red in there. And then I'm just going to take a nice big scoop of white and start mixing that in. And I want to go pretty pale here to start, so I'm using lots of white. The lighter your color is, the easier it is to sort of cover up if you do want to make changes. And I might put a little bit more red in there too. Okay. So with this color, I'm going to actually end up swiping quite a bit of that off my brush. We don't need much paint for this first step. And we're going to come up and we're just going to create almost an upside down heart shape. So I'm going to start with the point, which would be the bottom of my heart, right up here at the top. And I'm going to come out. And then I'm going to do the other side. So step one, just sort of an upside down, kind of crooked heart. And then this top section here, I don't want it to be quite that pointy, so I'm going to just round it out a little bit by taking my brush and just kind of softening that top shape. So it still has a triangular feel, but it's definitely not sharp. And then one other thing that I want to adjust down on the bottom here is I don't want, again, I don't want a point right in here. So I'm just going to use my brush to just sort of soften that. I still want a valley, but not a sharp point. And you want to make sure that your jellyfish is nice and big because this is the only thing going on our painting other than a few bubbles around the edges. So make sure it's big enough. It's taking up quite a bit of space in that top half of your canvas. Um, you can always go bigger. You cannot go smaller, but you can always make this a little bit bigger if you need to. And make sure you're happy with the shape because as we go, um, we're just going to start coloring that in now. So one last thing that I want to do with this color is I want to start adding these tentacles kind of floating down from the jellyfish. So I'm going to grab a little more paint 
And if you are using canvas, if you wet your brush and then grab a little paint, that'll help the paint flow a little bit nicer on your canvas. Um, if you're using paper though, I don't recommend using a whole lot of water, just so you don't get your paper all soggy. So on the left side here of my jellyfish, just kind of the, the bottom of the bump here, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna make this nice big squiggly line. It's gonna go right off the side of my canvas. And don't worry about it being super thin and delicate. These can be fairly thick lines. I like to do a little bit of variety, some thick, some a little thinner. And then I want to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to come out from this bump right here. And I'm going to come down. And I'm going to let that one come right off the bottom of the canvas here. And then once we've got those two, those are sort of going to give us the shape to follow along when we're filling in all of the rest of the tentacles. But I want to throw a few more of those just inside. And when you get down to the end of one, if you don't want it to go off the edge of your canvas, as you kind of get near the end, just release your pressure slowly on your brush and that will help to taper that end. And you can definitely crisscross them. It's okay if they overlap. This is going to be really full when we're finished. So I'm going to stop there for now. I will keep some of that color handy in case I want to use it again later on. But for the most part, I want to take most of that color and I'm going to lighten it now. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to grab more white. Lots of it. I'm saving a little bit of that blue there. Now I'm just lightening it with more white here, mixing it all together. All right, swipe some of that off the brush there. And then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to start filling in just a base color. So I might leave just a little tiny bit of this darker color kind of around the edge, just to give it a little more definition. And as I fill this in, I want to pay attention to the shape. So my brush strokes are going to be a little bit rounded. That's going to give your painting a little bit more of a 3D feel, your jellyfish. So on this side here, I'm going to kind of curve my strokes this direction. And on this side here, I'm going to curve them more in this direction. So all of my brush strokes are going to follow that curve just like that. And I'm just going to now keep filling it in. I want to keep my paint nice and thin, so I'm just not using too, too much paint on the brush. And mainly that's just so that it dries quickly because we're going to be doing a lot of layers on top and we won't necessarily want all of those colors to mix together, so we need them to dry pretty quick. And I, every now and then I'm just grabbing a little bit of extra white on my brush. That's just to lighten it up a little bit more. You can kind of adjust your color as you go. And that was just personal choice. It doesn't matter. It could be a little darker or a little lighter than mine. All right, and don't worry about it being perfectly blended either. If you can see a little bit of brush stroke, that is fine. That actually will help, again, to increase that sort of 3D feel because you'll see the direction of those strokes a little bit more. And it'll also help you when we layer on top know exactly which direction to put your new layers on. All right, so one more thing. I'm going to take some of this color again. I'm going to add a few more of these little squiggly lines coming out from the bottom.
All right, so we've got a good base happening. Um, now we're gonna start kind of adding some other colors, darkening some areas, brightening some areas. So I'm gonna rinse my brush out. Make sure you use the bottom of your jar or your cup and kind of use a little pressure, almost like you're mashing potatoes. That'll help to get all that paint out of those bristles. And then I'm gonna dry that brush off. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a little hint of um, like a lavender, a very pale purple. So first thing I need to do is mix that purple up. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna grab some red, just sort of push it out to the side. And again, I don't even need that much. We're only making a tiny little bit of this color because the majority of it will be white. Grab a little bit of blue. Start mixing that together and you can see it's quite dark. And then rather than taking white to this dark purple, I'm gonna bring a little bit of this dark purple over to my white. So I'm just pulling some of that white out, mixing them up. I think I want a little bit more of a blue tinted purple. I'm just adding a tiny little bit more blue to it. There we go. And it's still going to be pretty pale, nice and pastel. Swiping a lot of that paint off the brush. So um, we are going to start using a dry brush technique. So that just means that you don't want water in your brush and you don't want a lot of paint. Um, if you have too much paint, you're going to get these really bold streaks on there. And it's really hard to kind of remove that once it's on. So. Just go with a little bit of paint, so kind of scrape that brush off. Safer to have not enough than to have too much. If you can see your bristles through the paint, you should be good. And then we're gonna come up to the top of the jellyfish here. And again, I'm following the same direction. Now my paint is still a little bit wet, but purple and blue will mix okay. Um, if you're doing a different color that that maybe doesn't mix so well with blue, like for example, an orange, or if you want yellow, but you don't want it to turn green, you do need to let that completely dry before you put your next layer on. But for purple, I'm good, so I'm gonna keep going. So at the top here, I'm just gonna kind of brush down the edge a little bit, not all the way, I'm going kind of halfway down maybe, on each side. And then I'm just gonna pull a few strokes down the inside. So I've got sort of one on each side and three in the middle, all following the curve of my previous brush strokes. And now I just wanna fill this in lightly. So I don't want it to look like there are stripes on the jellyfish, but I don't want it to be um, a blunt solid line down here either. So I'm just gonna take that brush and just sort of pull down in between. Sometimes I've got longer strokes, sometimes they're shorter. And what that'll do is it'll give you this really uneven line down here. It's pretty solidly filled in at the top, but then it gets a little sparser as it comes down. So that is gonna be our second layer done. Just a little bit of that purple at the top. Now I wanna go in with like a darker blue and really kind of darken up that top section a little bit more. So I'm gonna rinse that brush again. Give it a good dry. We wanna get as much water out as we can. And again, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a purpley blue. So a little bit of red mixed in with some blue. I'm just gonna stir that together. Add a bit of white. So it needs to be quite as light this time. Just 
play till you get the color that you want. And then I'm going to swipe off the excess paint again. We're still dry brushing here. Coming up to the top, and I'm going to sort of do the same process. So I may not do an outline this time, but I am going to pull a quick little strip of that darker color down in each side, still following the same direction of those brush strokes. And then I just want to sort of pick and choose some sections to add this darkness to. It doesn't need to go all the way across. So I'm just going to pull down from here in the middle, make that a little darker. Kind of darken this section over here a little. And I'm pressing really lightly. You don't need to press hard on the canvas. And with very little paint, it's really easy to just make these subtle little lines and little, little differences with each little stroke. All right, so I think I'm happy there. So I can still see a lot of that light blue. I can still see some of that purple. And now I have this dark blue added in there as well. So I'm going to rinse that brush out. And one couple things I forgot to do. We need to add a few more tentacles down here in those other colors. So I'm going to go back into my purple. And I'm just going to throw a few of those little squiggly lines down. And you can play with the thickness. You don't need to use a different brush in most cases, um, but the lighter you press, the thinner your lines will be. The harder you press, the thicker your lines will end up. All right, so I've put in a few of those little purple lines. I've done three. I'm gonna go back into that dark blue now and just put a few in with that color as well. And again, don't forget, if you need to add a little water to your brush to sort of help that paint make it all the way down in one uh, nice solid line, that can really help. If you do run out of paint before you finish, it just means your paint's a little dry. Perfect, all right, let's rinse that brush again. All right, so at this point, my paint still, I'm looking, it's still a little shiny, which means it's still a little bit wet, this light blue here. And for these next few colors that I'm gonna add in, I really need to make sure that's dry because I don't want them to mix. I wanna get nice um, bright reds and oranges. I don't want that blue mixing in. So I'm gonna give that a few more minutes to completely dry before I move on. So just hit the pause button, use a, a hair dryer or just be patient and let that dry and then we'll keep going when that is all finished. Okay, I think we are good to keep going now. So I've got this dry to the touch and we're gonna go in with our next color. So make sure um, that medium brush was nice and clean and dry. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of like a, a golden yellowish orange color here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red And pull some yellow into that. I want sort of a pale orange to start, kind of like a carrot color. Not Definitely not a reddish dark orange. There we go. And then again, I want to lighten this by scooping some white into there, quite a bit of white. And that's going to give me this like bright, mustardy, yellowy, 
kind of golden color. It's not, not really yellow, not really orange, sort of in between. All right, and then I'm gonna swipe off that brush again. So there's not much paint. I can see those bristles. And then we're gonna come back up to this jellyfish and we're gonna start from the bottom this time and sort of sweep up with our colors. So I'm gonna pick and choose just a few spots of where I wanna put these. So I might put a little bit over in this corner here. Still following the direction of the curve. And then I'll maybe throw some kind of pulling upwards here. And maybe one spot over on this side. So I am going to put some tentacles in with this color, but they aren't fully dry yet, so like the top was. So I'm still gonna make sure I still have some of this color on my plate, but I am gonna let that bottom area dry a little bit, more, little bit more before I add those in. So just give that brush another rinse, and we'll get ready to make our next color, which is gonna be like a fuchsia, so a really bright um, reddish pink. So I'm just gonna grab a bit of white here and pull some red. And just mix those up. Looking for a nice bright pink, not, not soft with bubble gum, but nice and bright. And same thing, we're gonna swipe off the extra paint so that we can see those bristles. And then sort of in between all of these orange sections, I'm gonna throw in a few uh, sections of this pink. So I'm starting at the bottom again and I'm just kind of sweeping that brush up, pressing really light. And you should almost get these like um, unfinished kind of see-through lines happening. They don't need to be solid. All right, so put in as much or as little as you like of each of these colors, but I'm pretty happy. I think I'm, I'm gonna leave this section for now alone. I am gonna come back and just add a few little dark accents near the end, but I'm gonna give that some time to dry. I'm gonna give these tentacles another couple of minutes to dry before I add more in. And in the meantime, instead of just sitting there watching our paint dry, we're gonna add some bubbles into the outside edges here. So rinse out your brush really well. And here's where you can use uh, the small brush if you prefer, especially for kind of making the shapes. Um, you're gonna decide first of all what color you wanna make your bubbles. Do you want them to be more of the purpley blue? Do you wanna go more into an aqua color? Um, I think I, I'm gonna add some aqua in for another color. So to do that, I'm gonna take just a little bit of yellow and then I'm gonna bring that over, find some space here, I'm gonna pull some blue out. Again, I only need like a fairly small amount here because the majority of this color will be white. And then I'm just gonna take kind of a little scoop of that on my brush, pull it over here and start mixing it into my white. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And now for the bigger bubbles, I think I might use my medium brush. I'm gonna wet it a little bit and just kind of grab a little bit of paint with the wet brush. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom here and I'm gonna make one sort of uh, fairly large circle, maybe around the size of a ping pong ball, something like that. And circles aren't always the easiest shape to make, so if you don't get it quite bang on the first time, that's okay. Um, and also, bubbles don't necessarily need to be perfect circles. Sometimes they look a little bit more like, um, even like a jelly bean shape. So oval, circle, jelly bean-ish, anything like that will work. Um, so what I want to do is the bottom, I'm going to imagine my light source. This is an important thing. My light source is going to be up in this corner here. So the lighter part of my bubbles is going to be on the left side and the darker part of my bubbles will be on the lower right side. So I'm going to kind of fill in just that lower right part of the bubble there. And then we're going to finger paint. So I'm going to grab a, well I don't need to grab it, I'm going to take one finger. I'm going to stick it into some white paint. That might be a bit too much. There we go. And then right in that empty spot, I'm going to start doing little circles outward, getting bigger and bigger. I'm just going to let that sort of mix a little bit with that aqua color paint that I had there. And what we want to see is this darker area down here and this lighter area up top. So there should be a little transition. And if your finger is a little bit clumsy like mine and you kind of mess up your edges a little bit, that's when that small brush can come in handy. All right, so that's gonna be the base. We will come in and just accentuate that, that bright spot a little bit more later on. But we're gonna repeat that process for as many bubbles as you wanna do. And they can be all different sizes, some a little smaller, some a little bit bigger. But just remember that lighter kind of white spot is always going to be facing this corner. And try to blend out any sort of harsh lines that you might get inside the bubble. It should be nice and soft. No um, harsh lines or harsh color transitions. And then if you want to do a smaller bubble, you can switch to the smaller brush, but the process will be the exact same. And if you've got a really small bubble, instead of using your finger, you can just grab a little white on your brush. And then just very carefully kind of dab it to help soften and blend those colors together. So I'm gonna do four down there and I think I'm gonna put three more up at the top here.
Sometimes I like to have two fingers going. Just depends how much paint I have on them. If you get a little bit too much paint, it can help to have a second finger in there to sort of help spread it out a little. So I know I whipped those out pretty quickly. So if you're still working on those bubbles, take your time, hit the pause button now and uh, finish up and then we'll continue on with the rest of our jellyfish. And if you are ready to go, then we're gonna keep going. So this is pretty dry down here now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that medium brush again Dry it off. Um, I'm gonna go into the two colors we did at the end there. So that kind of uh, golden orangey yellow color and that fuchsia color. You can grab a little water on the brush if you want. And then I'm just gonna put in some more of those swirly lines. I love how these ones just brighten it up. I love this color. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush again and go into the pink. Okay, so I've cleaned out my brush. I've got all of my colors put in down here. I do want to fill this in a little bit more though, so it's not quite so sparse, especially up at the top by my jellyfish. Um, but I want to be really careful doing that again because some of these colors aren't going to mix that well together. So while that is drying a little bit more, I'm just going to grab this very thick chunk of paint there. While that's drying a little bit more, I'm going to come up to my jellyfish here and add in just a few more, um, one more layer basically, a few more dark lines. So I want one more darker color than this one here. So I'm actually gonna use like just that blue and purple. That's not it. Over here I'm gonna mix a little blue and a little purple. which is gonna give me this really nice dark, kind of purpley blue. And if you wanna test it out, just use the edge of your plate and spread a little bit out and you'll be able to see your color a little bit easier. That looks about right. So I'm gonna scrape off my brush so there's hardly any paint left on it. And then I'm just gonna, in these areas that are already dark, I'm just gonna come in and just pull in a few like even darker lines. 
So again, we don't want stripes. So try and think of it as working in sections rather than just throwing in random stripey lines. do with this color is again a little bit of definition sort of on the bottom section of the jellyfish here so I'm going to use my smaller brush to do that but before I do it I may add a few tentacles with this color as well so again be careful especially around the orange we don't want to mix these two colors too much if we can help it And then any other little white areas that you can kind of see right underneath your jellyfish, just use the colors that you've already got. I may even use some of that blue from the very, very beginning. And I'm just gonna try and fill some of that space in a little bit. Now, if you're getting a lot of color mixing happening and you don't like how it looks, wait, just be patient. Give it a quick um, shot with your hair dryer. If you don't mind the color mixing or you just don't wanna wait, just throw in a few extra little streaks so that it's pretty full up top there. Perfect, okay, so I'm gonna rinse that brush out. I'm gonna start with this, the larger brush here, my medium brush. I'm gonna grab a little of that dark blue and right in this area here, I just want a little definition. So I'm just, remember that nice sort of valley shape that we had in there at the beginning? I'm just gonna kind of put that back in. So I'm going right to where all the colors touch the jellyfish to get a nice, dark line there and then I want to thicken it up just in the middle. And then I'll switch to my smaller brush, same color. And I'm just going to bring that a little bit longer. Extend it up the sides a little bit of this jellyfish. All right, give our brushes both a really good rinse off. It's never a good idea to leave them sitting in the jar of water. I have a bad habit of doing that. And then all I'm gonna do is kind of finish off my bubbles with one little um, bright spot. So I'm just gonna take my medium brush, I'm gonna grab a tiny little bit of white, and then I might tap a little bit of that off. And then in each bubble, I'm just gonna put a little quick little swipe right in the lighter spot. So kind of in that upper left area. A quick little white swipe just so they look shiny. And then if you want, you can do a little bit of splatter with this painting. Since it doesn't have an actual background, we just have white canvas. A little bit of splatter is really fun and there's so many colors on your plate there that you can choose from. Um, the only one that I'm going to caution you on is the pink. Um, if you splatter a little bit too much pink or red on a canvas, it can end up looking a little bit more like a horror movie scene or maybe in this case like a shark attack 
which does not lead to a very pretty painting. So I would go very easy or just avoid the pink completely, but you can splatter your other colors kind of all over this. So what I'm gonna do for that, if you like a really delicate splatter, you can use a toothbrush. If you want something that's a little bit chunkier, you can just use your medium paintbrush, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So you do need quite a bit of water mixed in with your paint in order to get it to kind of splatter on your canvas. And you can do this flat on a table or up on an easel like this. So I'm just gonna take some of this water. It does not matter that your water is a gross color, don't worry about it. And I'm gonna start by splattering some of this blue right here. So I'm just gonna take water and I'm gonna keep dropping water in until I get a nice runny consistency. So it kind of moves a little bit. Make sure you've got quite a lot of it loaded up in your brush. You are gonna get a little dirty doing this, those hands. Then we're gonna kind of pull it up to the canvas and I'm gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna pull back on those bristles. Make sure it's pretty close to the canvas so that you actually do hit the canvas and not anything behind the canvas. And you can do this as much as you want, adding as much splatter as you want on there with as many different colors as you want. You can see it is quite messy. So in between colors, just kind of give your hand a little wipe. Rinse your brush. I'll go into some of this yellow. And I'm going to grab some of this teal as well. All right, so I'm gonna clean these hands off here. And then that does it. So the only other thing that you'll wanna to do to this painting is get your signature on there. And again, you've got plenty of color options to choose from. So just take your small brush. I would get a little water mixed into your paint. And that's it. So if you love this painting, I encourage you to do it again with different colors. You could paint this one so many times and they'll be completely different every single time. It's also great practice for bubbles, which are really fun to paint. We will see you guys next time. Have a fantastic day and keep painting. Bye.